Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland Reviewer, and this is the 5th Annual Wasteland Reviewer Awards. And in the past, I really focused on using all the same awards that the Academy Awards does, and I picked my own nominees and picked my own winners. This time around, I decided to streamline it a bit to some of the ones that I feel like I feel most comfortable judging. There's certain ones like sound mixing, sound editing, stuff like that. Not the huge, most comfortable with judging, but, and this is also an interesting year. So, I'm not doing what all the other award shows are doing and extend, like, the deadline. I am strictly looking at films that were released in 2020. And it could have been a limited release. That is okay. The issue, so, to put this out there then, Minari, The Father... Nomadland, films like that came out in 2021 and they got pushed back because they did have a longer window for awards consideration but I'm only doing films that are strictly from 2020. Right now Minari and Nomadland are very high up on my 2021 list so you might see them at the sixth annual uh, Wasteland Review Awards but for this year just 2020 films and I'm gonna read the nominees and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the winner. So to keep it streamlined a bit. So starting off with documentary films. So feature length documentaries. Nominated Athlete A, Rewind, Totally Under Control, Boy State, which that was real close to winning this. But my number one, which made my top ten, is Feels Good Man. And this film focusing on the man who made... That frog that I think all of us have seen in some kind of meme or anything, whether they're innocent or pretty disturbed, this film really focuses on the fight for copyright and to keep your art yours without other people bastardizing your art. And also, some of the darkest, weirdest, uncomfortable, unnerving things that are out there on the internet. This documentary shook me. And that's why I'm giving Feels Good Man the best documentary for 2020. We have costume design, we have news of the world, extraordinary, small little film, loved it, it's a lot of fun, Jingle Jangle from Netflix, Mank, and the winner, Emma. And I loved Emma, it was an absolute delight, one of the last big films I saw in theaters before, you know, COVID happened. And having rewatched it again, within like the past two months, since I got it on Blu-ray, it is a beautiful film with wonderful costume designs, just exquisite colors, and just pops. Everything just looks absolutely perfect. Then we have production design, which is very similar. We have Extraordinary, Jingle Jangle, Mank, threw Wolf Walkers in there. Just because it's animated doesn't mean it can't have an amazing production design. And yet again, I'm going with Emma. Emma was visually an absolute delight. So I'm definitely giving the love to Emma. This was a tough one. We have effects. So I have Greenland, Color Out of Space, a crazy Nick Cage movie, His House, wasn't huge special effects, but it was used extremely effectively. I really wanted to give this to Tenet, but honestly, I had to give it to The Invisible Man, because that film would not work without the really impressive special effects they utilized to create an invisible man and how the scenes worked with somebody not there and it's really impressive how uh lee wannell was able to make all of that work so effects goes to the invisible man we're going smaller real i almost gave it to tenant i almost had to we have foreign language film which we have baccarat which crazy genre bending film Morona's Fantastic Tale, and this is a little French animated film. Lucky Grandma, The Mole Agent, which is so moving. I see a lot of people are actually checking out my Mole Agent review lately, so go check that one out. And this was an easy one, because this was almost one of my best picture too. And that's Another Round from Thomas Vinterberg and Maz Mikkelsen. And this film is funny and cathartic, and dramatic, and emotionally moving in every way. I absolutely loved every second of another round. We have animated feature. We have Onward, 
from Disney Pixar. We have Morona's Fantastic Tale, which also got into my foreign language nominees. We have Soul. We have Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon. I loved me some Farmageddon so much. Absolutely loved it. Came out on Netflix like in January last year. So it is over a year old. And the winner, hands down, which I'll be talking about this more, is Cartoon Saloon and Apple TV Plus's Wolf Walkers. Beautiful, beautiful film. Absolutely moving and intense and creative and dark and meaningful. Such a fantastic Cartoon Saloon kills it every time. Now we have editing. So I have Aiden Go for The Five Bloods, Kirk Baxter for Mank, Andy Canny for The Invisible Man, Mikkel E.G. Nielsen for Sound of Metal, and I had to give it to Jennifer Lame for Tenant. That film, you can say what you will about the screenplay. This is definitely not getting nominated for screenplay on my show. But the craft that went into putting this whole film together and editing it together to make sense for this crazy ambitious story and time twisting to actually work definitely deserved it. We have score. Ludwig Gorenson for Tenant. Benjamin Walfish for The Invisible Man. Bruno Coleus for Wolf Walkers. And Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor nominated for Mank, winning for Soul. This was an easy one. They had two amazing scores this year. It was just which one I wanted to give it to. Soul, definitely. The music was the heart of that film, and they definitely earned this win for Best Original Score. They're an amazing pair, that Ross and Bresner. We have Cinematography, my personal favorite award, because I love cinematography. Newton Thomas Seigel for The Five Bloods. Hoyt Van Hoytema for Tenant. Darius Wolski for News of the World, Eric Messerschmidt for Mank, and Christopher Blovet for First Cow. This was a beautiful, just wonderfully textured film, and how it was shot just looked absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. It looked like I was looking at a painting in every frame, and Blovet earn that so much. You didn't have the big guns like a Deacon's out there this year, but that film First Cow is an absolutely beautiful film. Now we're getting into some of like the big categories. I'm only doing screenplay because honestly I didn't feel the need to break them up. So we have five nominees here. We have Rhonda Blank for the 40-year-old version. We have Andy Ciara and Mike Mikowski. We have Thomas Vinterberg and Tobias Lindholm for another round. But my winner is Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Woman. This film had a lot to say. It was ambitious. It was sharp. The dialogue was poignant. And it was a shocking story. And how it all played out that screenplay was impressive, and Emerald Fennel definitely deserves that nomination. Getting into the acting categories, we have Best Supporting Actress, Ellen Bernstein for a, a Pieces of a Woman, Helena Zangle for News of the World, which she was so fantastic, Maria Bakalova for <laughs> the Borat subsequent movie film, Amanda Seyfried for Mank, and my winner, this might surprise you, is Sarah Paulson for the film Run. And this thriller, which was a Hulu release in the fall, she was unnerving. And Sarah Paulson's a great actress. She's really showing her chops in a lot of her work recently, and she's unnerving. She There's, there's something about this performance that seems so emotional and relatable and empathetic, yet so terrifying all at once. And Sarah Paulson really, really earned this win because if you haven't seen Run, go check it out on Hulu right now. She is fantastic and really sells that role, which is essential for the film to work. Best Supporting Actor, Sasha Baron Cohen 
for the trial of the Chicago 7. We have Hugh Grant for The Gentleman. Him as Fletcher in that is absolutely fantastic. Paul Racy for Sound of Metal. I remember watching that film and knowing, like, this guy needs to be nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Immediately watching that. Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami. And our winner, Chadwick Boseman for The Five Bloods. He gives such a fantastic performance and I loved every second of it when he was on screen. And there was something special in that film when he graced his, that screen with his presence. Best Actress, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman. Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman. Rhonda Blank for Forty Old Version. She was fantastic. I wish that movie got some more attention. Sydney Flanagan for Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. And my win, and I'm sad that this didn't carry momentum from very early last year, but Elizabeth Moss for The Invisible Man. She was fantastic. She had to show so much emotion and paranoia and vulnerability. And also, she got to flaunt some power, too, throughout the film as well. And she delivered on every single point. That was a fantastic leading performance. Now we have actor, and I'm going to preface this. I do include quote-unquote TV films. Obviously, I showed a bunch. There's been Netflix and Hulu and all these different th films that haven't been shown in theaters. So just prefacing that, and if that might help you allude to things, Delroy Lindo for *The Five Bloods*. He needs to get more attention at award season for that performance he gives in that film. Chadwick Boseman for *Ma Rainey's Black Bottom*, which fantastic performance. Riz Ahmed really made a statement with Sound of Metal, and that was an intense performance. Maz Mikkelsen for another round. F between that and The Hunt, he does such great work with Vinterberg. And biases here, one of my favorite actors, Hugh Jackman for Bad Education. And this was an HBO film. It came out in 2020, and I'm going to give it some love. And Hugh Jackman walks an amazing tightrope between absolutely purely despicable and somehow we can't resist liking him. And there's something special in that. This makes Hugh Jackman a two-time winner, going back to Logan. But he really deserved this best actor. And honestly, this was a really tough decision because all of them that I nominated were unbelievable performances that I wish all of them could have won. But there can only be one. Now we have director. We have Thomas Vinterberg for Another Round, Darius Martyr for Sound of Metal, Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Woman, Lee Wannell for Invisible Man, and our winner, Christopher Nolan for Tenet. You can say what you will about this film. It was directed to perfection. Somehow this movie made, came together and worked. Somehow. And that's Christopher Nolan behind the camera. And that... He created something special. I wish that I wish that this film worked on all levels so I could be putting that up there for best picture. It definitely didn't. The screenplay was not great and the performances, they didn't have a whole lot to work with because they're barely characters. But that direction is impeccable. Now we have best picture. So nominees are Bad Education, from HBO. Sean the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, from Netflix. Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, which was a theatrical VOD virtual cinema release. Another Round, which was also VOD release. And then Apple TV Plus's and Cartoon Saloon winner, Wolf Walkers. This was a special film. It blew me away. And if you haven't gotten a chance to see Wolf Walkers, after now winning both Animated Feature and Best Picture for the Wasteland Reviewer Awards, go check this film out. It's going to be so worth your time. Cartoon Saloon makes animated films on a whole other level. And they're beautiful and poignant. And they make it... Sh they solidify the fact that 2D animation is not dead. And it's still worth making films that way. Between them and Laika... 
they keep really impressive artistic animation running and I'm so glad that Cartoon Saloon has found an outlet with Apple TV Plus so go check out Wolf Walkers. But those are my nominees. Obviously some of them are a little biased and some of them are a little out there. I will admit that. But 2020 was a special interesting year and I want you to comment below. Let me know what some of your favorite what your winners would be in some of these categories because I always love to talk movies and I think there's a lot to talk about in 2020. It was a weird year, but film kept going, and there was some great cinema out there. And, yeah, we might not have been able to see them on the big screen, but there was great work happening, and I'm so glad that I got to see so many of these films. There's so many films that didn't get nominated for any of these that were so amazing, like Palm Springs. I absolutely love that film, but it didn't get there. Possessor. Um, just so many different films out there. Go check them out on virtual cinemas, on streaming services, and if you get a chance and you're feeling comfortable, going out to theaters. But most important thing is, this marks five years of doing this show. This is the fifth Wasteland Reviewer Awards, and I've been doing this channel for, for since August 2016. So it's been almost five years, and it's been exciting, and things seem to be blowing up a bit and I'm getting some more attention. I'm growing faster than I have in any time during this time. So thank all of you who tune in and support your Wasteland Reviewer.